I want to begin by asking you a question. Are you looking forward to Christmas? I think I know the answer. Lots of people are looking forward to Christmas, of course, especially after the difficult year it's been due to the coronavirus. Some people will be hoping that this is the biggest and bestest Christmas ever. Bestest? I'm not sure that's an actual word, but you know what I mean. Anyway, some people will have a big tree in their front room and they'll be looking forward to a big turkey to eat on Christmas Day and perhaps a big party on Boxing Day. Well, maybe not too big a party due to the current restrictions. Many people will be hoping to get some big presents this Christmas, I'm sure. But you know what? At Christmas time, instead of thinking big, we should think small. Christmas started with the birth of a tiny little baby born in a tiny little shed in a tiny little town called Bethlehem. This baby was Jesus, God's son. This is the story of what happened that first Christmas. A long time ago in the town of Nazareth lived a young woman named Mary. She was engaged to be married to Joseph, who was a carpenter. One day while Mary was at home, an angel suddenly appeared. Before Mary could say anything, the angel told her that she was favoured by God and that God was with her. Mary was surprised. She was trying not to be afraid, but she had never seen an angel before. But the angel quickly reassured her and said, Do not be afraid. God has found favour with you. You will have a baby boy and you are to give him the name Jesus. Mary was confused. She had not yet married Joseph, so how could she have a baby? The angel thought that this might be of concern to Mary, so he said, The Holy Spirit will perform a miracle, and because of this your baby will be called the Son of God. To Mary's surprise, the angel had more exciting news. Even your cousin Elizabeth is going to have a son in her old age. Many thought that she couldn't have children, but she is already pregnant. Nothing is impossible with God. Mary was amazed at what she was hearing, but even so she accepted what the angel said and replied, I am God's servant. Let this happen just the way you said it would. And with that, the angel left. Sometime later, Joseph found out that Mary was going to have a baby. Joseph was confused and upset by this, but an angel came to him in a dream and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She is going to have a baby by the power of God's Spirit, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he remembered what the angel had said, and he knew that everything would be okay. In those days, the government decided that they should count everyone that lived in that area of the world. So Joseph had to take Mary to his town of Bethlehem to register. It took Mary and Joseph a long time to get to Bethlehem. This was very tiring for Mary because she was soon going to have the baby. When they reached the town, all the hotels were full and there was nowhere that they could stay. Finally, someone offered them a small barn where animals were kept. Mary and Joseph were thankful that they at least had a place to lie down. It was warm and there was plenty of straw to lie on. That night an exciting, wonderful thing happened. Mary gave birth to a baby boy, just as the angels had told her and Joseph, and the little baby fell asleep in Mary's arms. When Jesus came from heaven to earth, he started life here as a tiny little baby. He was born not in a great big palace with a gold crib, but in a tiny shed with a wooden manger, and not in a great big city, but in a little town called Bethlehem. There were no crowds lining the streets to welcome him, or reporters gathered round to get the story. Only a few people really knew what an amazing thing had happened that night. And yet it's the birth of this baby that we celebrate at Christmas, because of who he is and what he came to do for us. Mary was told that her baby would be the Son of God, and Joseph was told that he would save his people from their sins. In other words, the Bible teaches us that God sent Jesus into the world to take the blame for the wrong things in our lives so that we can be his friends and one day live with him in heaven. The good news is that God loves us and wants us to be his friends and this is what we celebrate at Christmas. 
And God's love was wrapped up not in a great big present, but in a tiny little baby. The first Christmas wasn't about a great big present. It was about a tiny baby that God sent to show his love for us. When it comes to showing love to others, often it's little things that mean the most, such as putting your arm around someone when they're upset, visiting someone who's not feeling well, doing something to help, such as giving food to the local food bank. These acts of kindness may seem small, but they can make a big difference in people's lives. God showed his love for us by sending his son Jesus into the world as a tiny little baby. It's not the size of the present that God gave us that we should celebrate at Christmas, but the love that came with it. And so it's not the size of the presents we get or the presents we give that matters most at Christmas, but the love that comes with them. So let's remember to be thankful for the little things our family and friends do each day to show their love for us, and not just for the presents they buy us at Christmas. And let's celebrate God's love for us this Christmas by looking out for some little things that we can do to show our love for others. Now, I want you to take a moment to think about one little thing that you could do that could make a big difference for someone else. I'm going to finish now with a prayer. Father God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus that first Christmas to be our saviour. Help us to remember that even though he came as a tiny baby, he has made the biggest difference to the world. As we celebrate his birth at Christmas, help us to do what we can to make a big difference to those around us by the little things we do for them. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Thanks again for your company today. Until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful Christmas.